This is from chapter 16, Being Ourselves. Find a patch of sunshine, or a place where it's warm and still. Sit or stand, whichever is most comfortable. You'll need to put the book down in a moment, because I want you to shut your eyes and imagine what it will be like after civilization has gone. If you've ever been somewhere truly wild, even just for a camping trip or a long walk, that will help your imagination. If you already live somewhere truly wild, then this will be an easy exercise. If you're dependent upon industrial civilization to provide you with everything, then it will be hard, maybe impossible. Imagine no cities, no paved roads, no pylons, no offices or factories. Imagine having to grow everything, make everything, do everything for yourself. Now close your eyes and go there for a while. Mixed feelings. Loss, emptiness, a sense of solitary isolation. Tough work, endless toil, dirt, disease and death. Rubble, dust, twisted metal and poisoned water. Constant battles, tribal rivalries and extreme hostility between people. Distance, a depraved past and a promising future. Cleanliness, fresh air, fresh water open to the elements and a feeling of raw, real living, richness, fulfilment, connection, freedom. Most of us are not mentally or physically ready to cope with the loss of something we have been made to believe is so important to us. Take away civilization tomorrow and we could fall too far to save ourselves. We have to start thinking like survivors again because one way or another, Suddenly, through this culture's self-destructive behaviour, or more gradually, by our own caring hands. That is, that the world we will be seeing in two or three generations, possibly only one. If you're prepared for it, then the journey and the eventual destination can show you what it's really like to be human. Prepare, and your existence outside civilization can be something that you can only find outside civilization, something real, and truly good. Civilization has taught us that there's only one way to go, and that's forwards, in a straight line, always increasing, always renewing, always disposing of the past and reaching for something more. We rush headlong into the future with overwhelmed enthusiasm, trusting our survival to the blind faith that keeps us moving forwards with the current, getting faster and faster, pulling us towards a place that's not been made, yet one that we are told is the only place to go. We're stuck in a rip current of our own making, sucking us into the open sea, out of control. It's surprisingly easy to get out of a rip current, just swim sideways. We rightly look to the past as a way of understanding how we got here, and also so we can learn lessons about the right and the wrong way to do things. But remember what we talked about in part two, about the way we're bound to our temporal life. We have to live for the future rather than the past. It's just that there's more than one future. As a good friend of mine wrote, what we do in the future is what counts, and I think we need to become something new, not return to some earlier state. Now we have to use our brains and our knowledge to change ourselves in deliberate ways. Step out of the rip current and step into something else a more docile, less urgent flow of time. One that understands how we relate to the natural processes of the world, that allows us to grab hold of a branch or a piece of weed as it drifts into our path and see what it has to offer. Obviously, we cannot turn back the clock. But we're at a point in history when we not only can, but must pick and choose among all the present and past elements of human culture to find those that are most humane and sustainable. While the new culture we will create by doing so will not likely represent simply an immediate return to wild food gathering, it could restore much of the freedom, naturalness and spontaneity that we've traded for civilization's artifices. We need not slavishly imitate the past. We might rather be inspired by the best examples of human adaptation, past and present. Instead of going back, we should think of this process as getting back on track. Getting back on track. I like that. 
Industrial civilization is a blink in human history, a rapid artificial cataract on our many and varied courses downstream. Grab hold of something if you can, or step sideways and join a flow that you can control. Here's how to build your own boat with its own sail. <laughs>